Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use a disable field to create uh, large chaos destruction experiences like this one with uh, hundreds of pieces in the scene and uh, dozens more pieces being added every second um, and yet still maintain a very respectable frame rate uh, despite all of the uh, chaos physics action going on around the player. All right, so I'm going to get started here in a new first person template project. And the first thing I'll do is find the sleep and disable field from the engine contents. Uh, so in the content browser, I'll go to settings, show engine content. And in the engine folder, I'm going to search for uh, sleep disable. And there it is, nice FS underscore sleep disable field that I want to copy from the engine. So I'm going to duplicate this. It's always a good practice to uh, not to modify engine contents, rather to duplicate it and uh, move it to your own content folder. All right, so I'll turn off show engine contents and back in my content folder, I'm gonna drag one of the sleep and disable fields out into the world here. And so we get this uh, pink box here that's uh, showing us the size of the field. And uh, you can also change the field fall off shape here. This can also be a sphere or it can be a uh, plane. Uh, I'm gonna put it back to box for now. And you can adjust the field behavior here between sleep, disable, and kill. Uh, each of which uh, has their own uh, color assigned to them here. So you can visualize in the editor at a glance uh, which field is which. And of course that's editor side only. These fields uh, have, aren't visible at all in the game at runtime. All right, uh, so let's open up this actor here. Just quickly take a look under the hood. Um, we've got a fairly simple event graph here. We've got uh, some debug options here. Um, on the event tick, uh, we've got to check if the field is active. Uh, and then it creates our uh, box here, our field, based on what you've selected for behavior, sleeping, disable, or uh, kill. And uh, it's based off of a magnitude input here, uh, which is uh, exposed as a variable called threshold. So you can set um, basically the speed, it says here, if a rigid body passes into the box while traveling below this threshold, then it's going to uh, disable or sleep or kill. And uh, that's based on what you've selected in the uh, field behavior option. All right, um, so I'll close that for now. Fairly basic. Um, and what we'll do is uh, test this out a little bit here. I'm just going to uh, scale this up. Let's say I'll scale it up to fill this entire space. I'll just make it like 40 by 40 by uh, 5 and uh, we'll center it here somewhat. All right, and so uh, what I'll do here is I'm going to make a new geometry collection uh, in order to uh, test this out. So I'm just gonna go to the starter content folder into props, uh, and I'm gonna drag out one of these uh, SM underscore rocks. And I'll just drag it up a little bit into the uh, air here. And uh, I want to fracture that, but I'm going to scale it down first, just to 0.5 on all of the axes. Uh, and then I'm going to go to fracture mode and make a new geometry collection. Uh, and I'll use the uniform cutting tool and make uh, 50 cutting sites. And then I'll select fracture. Okay, and I'm going to go back to select mode now. And in the details here, I'm going to find show bone colors and set that to false. Uh, and then what we'll do here is um, if, I do, if I press play right now, this is just going to fall from the air uh, and break on the ground. Uh, but the sleep field isn't really doing anything. Um, these pieces aren't really set up to, uh, nothing's set up to happen when these pieces are asleep. Um, so one thing we can do, for example, uh, with sleep is if I look at my uh, rock geometry collection file here, I can open that up. And uh, down here at the bottom here, I've got removal options. And I can set this remove on max sleep. It says remove particle from simulation and dissolve the rendered geometry once the sleep threshold has been exceeded. So I set that to true uh, and the sleep threshold is this number of seconds here. Uh, and maybe I'll just make this a bit lower values for the purpose of demonstrating. Let's say between two and four seconds after sleeping, uh, remove pieces and take between two and a half and five seconds to dissolve them. And these ranges here are just to break it up visually so it's not quite as noticeable what's happening. Um, and so this is one effect you can use to remove uh, fractured and broken geometry uh, from the scene um, somewhat smoothly and, and uh, rather than abruptly. All right, so let's check it out here, see how that works. Yep, 
Okay, so we can see that a bunch of these pieces here are uh, starting to dissolve away. And as we wait here and look, more of these pieces should start to dissolve. Um, there we go. I think if, if pieces are still touching and colliding with one another, they may register as being above the threshold. So it takes time for once ad adjacent pieces start dissolving, then they are maybe uh, being considered below the threshold after that. Uh, so that's basically how that works. And so uh, let's move on and try something else here. Uh, let's set this field here to, let's set the field behavior to uh, kill, for example. Uh, and a kill field is going to do just that. Anything that enters is going to be killed uh, in terms of, uh, it's going to be just removed from the physics pipeline entirely, completely, and there's no way to re-enable it or wake it up later. It's just gone. Um, and so if we try this out, for example, I'll press play. We can see that our rock gets stuck there right at the start of the field. Um, <clears throat> I'll just turn off uh, motion blur here. I think that's causing a bit more... Uh, let's see here. Um, well, it's still a little bit blurry, but anyway, the, uh, the field causes the particles to be killed immediately. And so the use for a kill field is um, if you've got, you know, a, a chaos uh, experience happening on screen, you can place uh, kill fields just off screen or in the areas where the particles may be headed um, to keep them uh, from overloading the, the physics pipeline. Um, all right. And so the next one I'm going to look at is the disable field, which is similar to the kill field, uh, but pieces that have been disabled can be re-enabled uh, by setting up the correct field settings. Um, and disable essentially is going to allow pieces to be removed from the physics pipeline so they're no longer being considered for collisions and, and uh, whatnot against other pieces. Uh, which is going to allow your frame rate to stay a lot higher than if, if all of the pieces in the simulation were constantly being uh, evaluated. Um, so for this one here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this uh, rock geometry collection from the scene, and I'm going to make a new actor, a uh, new blueprint actor called B underscore falling rock. And uh, I'm going to add a component to that, a geometry collection. And the geometry collection here, I'm going to set the rest collection to the rock geometry collection. Uh, and then what I want to do is uh, I want to add some effects to this, uh, what, I'm, what I'm going to create here. So I'm going to uh, go to under general here in the settings. I'm going to say notify breaks and set that to true. And then I'm going to go to the event graph and I'm going to find an empty spot here. I'm going to say on chaos break event. And uh, on each break event, well, not every break event, um, that might be too much. So I'm going to just say uh, random integer in range. Let's get a random integer from uh, 0 to 20. And then from the return value, we'll see if that's equal to 0. So that's going to give me roughly a 5% chance on break for this to occur. And uh, what I want to do is spawn emitter at location and uh, we'll spawn, first we'll spawn an explosion and the location here, I'm going to plug in the break event. I have to uh, split the pin here, plug in break event location. Uh, and then I want to spawn another emitter, control D to duplicate and uh, we'll spawn a smoke emitter. And for this one, I'm going to scale it up as well to maybe like two on all of the axes. And uh, we'll plug in that same location here all right, and uh, so what I want to do here is have a bunch of these falling rocks spawn over overhead or around the middle of the uh, map here in the air and fall down towards the ground and be crashing and breaking and exploding and smoke rising and etc. Uh, and so uh, one more thing before I move on here, I need to adjust this smoke uh, particle system because by default it's set to just continually loop over and over again. There's no end and it'll never be destroyed here as per this uh, auto destroy. So uh, I'm going to find that quickly here in starter content uh, particles and uh, open up P underscore smoke. Uh, and I'll select the uh, required selection here or uh, section and I'll find 
uh, under emitter loops here, it's set to zero, which is uh, to loop continuously. We're going to set this to just loop one time. And I'll save that and close that. Uh, and that's basically it for this falling rock actor as well. I'm going to compile, save, and close. And what I want to do to spawn those falling rocks uh, up in the air above the map is I'll just use the level editor. So I'll go to the toolbar here. Uh, uh, sorry, the level blueprint is what I meant to say. So I'll open the level blueprint here and make uh, a begin play node. And from the begin play node, I'm going to say set timer by event. Uh, and I'll drag back from event here and say make a new custom event, spawn rock. Uh, and we'll set the time here to maybe uh, 0.2 seconds. So we'll spawn five of these per second. I'm going to put that to looping. And uh, we'll drag from here and say spawn actor from class. And uh, I want to spawn that B underscore falling rock actor. All right, and then so I just need to specify the uh, transform here. I'll split the pin. And uh, for the location here, I'm going to put in uh, 1500 uh, on X, 1500 on the Y axis, and uh, let's say 1500 uh, on the Z axis as well. So that'll be roughly the middle of this map here and about 1500 units up in the air. Uh, for collision handling, I'm going to say uh, always spawn, ignore collisions. And for the rotation, I'm just going to put in a random rotator here so that we get um, some of them ro uh, appearing at different uh, rotations, which will help the, uh, the randomness of the effect. All right, so I'll compile and uh, save. And let's check it out so far here and uh, see how it's working. All right, um, so this is not too bad. And uh, certainly because of our disable field, uh, I'm sure that the frame rate is hanging on not too bad as well. And we'll just check that out here. All right, 70 to 80 frames, that's doing pretty good. Um, the only one thing that I would add here is that uh, we need to control the amount of uh, geometry in total that stays in the scene. Uh, and so I'm just going to go back to my content folder, open up the B Falling Rock Actor, and uh, I'm going to, in the details here, I'm going to find lifespan and set the initial lifespan to 10 seconds. So basically it's only going to spawn, uh, or each rock that spawns is only going to last for 10 seconds and then the geometry is going to uh, disappear, the, uh, the whole actor will be removed. Um, and so hopefully that wouldn't be too noticeable because there's going to be so many rocks and components of these actors on the ground. Um, and so let's check that out. We'll just watch in the world outliner here uh, and see how many actors it will create in total before 10 seconds is up and it starts removing them at the same rate. All right, so it's about 120 actors that's going to end up in the scene here. And uh, again, the frame rate holding on very nicely. It's uh, sitting at you know high 80s, um, low 90s, which is pretty good for having this much action going on in terms of uh, physics calculations and geometry being rendered here and you know, particle effects and everything else. Um, so let's take a look here quickly if uh, we didn't use the disable field, or let's just uh, disable it, say field active, we'll check, uh, set that to false. Uh, and let's see the difference in uh, frame rate that we might get here. All right, so starting out not too bad here. We're at 90 still, um, 80. Well, now we're down into the 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s. This isn't good. So seems to settle out here in and around uh, the 40 frame per second area. Um, which, I mean, obviously 40 frames is still playable, but you're also going to have other things going on in your game. You don't have the entire overhead available just to render this effect. And here, if we keep going, we can see we're actually dropping below 40 here, uh, occasionally into the high 30s. And so obviously you can see that the disable field has an immense effect on keeping the uh, frame rate high. Let's put that back on here. Run the simulation again. And uh, again, we shouldn't be dropping much below 90 frames at this rate. So a uh, lot less cost to uh, render this chaos uh, physics experience when using uh, the disable field. Oops, 
Looks like some of those rocks got stuck there. All right, well, that basically covers it for uh, this video. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.